real estate agent? Are you looking to acquire clients consistently so you can grow your business and your income to live a great lifestyle? This is Dave Finale and the RE Skill Builder Podcast. Hey everybody, it's Dave Finale, the Real Estate Talk TGIF Podcast. This is episode 164. <coughs> We've done these for 161 weeks in a row. Um, I want to see people actually, I want to see people challenge me and to keep going. And I'm going to keep doing these as long as, well, as long as I'm around as much as I know, right? So I'm going to keep oh. doing these. Um, our goal is just to get the next week every time. And that's what we do every week. Today, we got a great guest. We have David Radney, who is who is uh, a, 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 an agent coach extraordinaire, uh, has, his, has his own uh, program called PUSH. We're going to talk about that. He is a local, well, a transplant from other parts yes. of the country to the state of New Jersey. So we are in the same area and uh, we're going to talk a lot about, you know, building agents, businesses through prospecting, et cetera. But David, I got a question. I got to ask you, like I ask everybody else when we start the broadcast, the question is real estate talk TGIF. What does TGIF stand for? <laughs> Thank God it's finale. Yes, that's <laughs> it. I did my yeah. homework. <laughs> I, I tell you what, I'm going to say that there's like only like five or six people that have gotten that answer correctly, yes. and you yes. you have you you got it, man. You've got it. <laughs> so so what we um what we're going to do is we're going to get started here. So David, as I said, you're you're you're, you're New Jersey. You're a transplant from other parts of the country, and that has a lot to do with your story and where you came from and what you do now. So so just go into that for a bit. Um, and talk to me about that. Absolutely. So, you know, you know a little bit of my background. I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, lived in Los Angeles, Austin, Houston, Dallas, and New Jersey. And I started my real estate journey in, in Houston. And at that point in time, I didn't know anyone. Uh, same thing when I moved to Dallas, same thing when I moved to New Jersey. So I didn't have that sphere of influence that most real estate agents have. And so in order for me to get into production and start making money, I needed to figure out a quick way to do it. And a mentor told me years ago, go after for sale by owners. And he told me FISBO, FSBO stood for not for sale by owner, but fastest source of business opportunity. And if I wanted to get listings and get paid quickly, I needed to learn how to go after listings and for sale by owners were people who had their hand raised saying, I have a home to sell. And it was really up to me to figure out how to create the dialogue with them where they saw value in listing their home with me. And so that started my journey into learning scripts. And I, I, I'm working towards not using the word script as much and using dialogue. It, it really taught me how to have a dialogue with a for sale by owner where they saw the value in hiring me. And um, that started my journey with scripts and objection handling. Well, you know what, you know, it, it's, it's, it's really interesting that you go from scripts to dialogues and, and and uh, one of one of my coaches of, of many many years likes to take the term scripts and dialogues, that phrase, not term, that script phrase, yes. and change it over from copywriting to language patterns. Copywriting mm -hmm. and language patterns, mm -hmm. which seems to really work. And I look at it this way, and, and tell me what you think about this. Is I look at scripts and dialogues as what to say and how to say it. Correct. Because let's face it, man. Um, you know, you can say. Hi, my name's Dave. I'm calling with such and such realty. Uh, is your house for sale? You know, I'm, I know that's really stupid, but anyway, there's a lot of different ways to say that exact thing. Of course. Right? So, 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 talk to me about the interpretation of what an agent needs to do. We'll get right into it. What an agent needs to do with with with, with scripts and, and how they work them and how they build them in their business. Well, I will tell you the biggest thing I hear from most agents is. I don't want to look at a script because it's not me. It sounds very robotic. It sounds very canned. And so they don't like using scripts for that reason. And what they fail to understand is a script is telling you what to say and how to say it. What you need to do as an agent is really internalize the script. And the best way to go about doing that, read the script out loud several times a day, write the script down and then practice and role play the script. So you get to a point where you're internalizing the script and you know what to say and you know how to say it. However, you're speaking as yourself and you don't sound robotic once you have it internalized. So that's been the biggest lesson that I learned about scripts. And that's the biggest thing that I work to teach my students is how to internalize the scripts. Right. And one of the things that, that, that we've worked on is we, we 
it's it's just like I'm gonna I'm gonna equate this to video for a second, right? So with video, people like they they stare into this camera and they look like they're it's, they look like deer in headlights when they start doing video. So one of the suggestions I give everybody, you've heard this before from the greatest in video, is that talk to somebody in the lens, right? Mm -hmm. Talk to someone mm -hmm. that you like. Talk to someone that you know. You're talking to one person. With yeah. scripts and dialogues, with the dialogues, I always say, talk to your Uncle Joe. Talk to someone that you respect, that Love you that. want them to understand you, right? Mm -hmm. And it helps an awful lot. So would you agree with that? I, I definitely would agree with that. And the piece of advice that I give, which is a little bit different than what you said, uh, most people get phone calls every day, scam likely on your phone. You're getting these telemarketing calls. And a lot of times we just put those right to voicemail or we decline those calls. I actually tell people start accepting those calls from telemarketers and give them some pushback and listen to how they're following a script. Listen to how they're overcoming your objections they don't sound robotic. They don't sound canned. And so it's a great example of how when you master a script, you're able to have a conversation and overcome people's objections. And that's been a really great exercise that people do that make them feel a little bit more comfortable learning the scripts and implementing those in their everyday business. Right. Because because now as we as they move along into their business, they're actually seeing, wow, that is a script, you know? Yep. And, and, and for me to get better for what you and I do with agents is I answer all those calls, right? I do. I answer all those calls. They say, what are you answering that for? I said, yep. I got to learn. I got to listen. Mm -hmm. And besides, for me, for me, it's actually fun because sometimes if it's if I've heard it before, I'm going to have fun with it. Sorry. Just a That's quick story. Right. To, remember years ago when they used to call you up and say, and they'd offer you a credit card over the phone? Oh, boy, I do. And I was I had two canned responses. One would be, oh, thank God, I really need the money. I just filed bankruptcy. That's the problem with it, right? <laughs> the other one was the other one was, uh, do I have to pay it back? <laughs> That's right. You so, have fun with it. Just make sure you don't buy anything when you have them on the phone. Have fun with it. And say, You're really good at your script. I appreciate it. I got I gotta go and hang up and keep it moving. So so let's talk about that agent, right? And I, I'm gonna use I'm going to use the, the words new agent mm -hmm. just because it's easier to talk about because you know as well as I do, Dave, David, you talk to people all the time. You talk to agents every day. And I'm going to tell you, if you talk to 100 agents you never talked to this week, there's going to be about 70 to 80 of them that you talk to that said that they do business by referral or right. they do business from people they know through their sphere of influence. Now, out of those 100 people, and those eighty percent that say they do that, how many of them have a true sphere of influence? <laughs> Probably not many. I maybe right. maybe twenty five percent, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. If if that, if that, this is one of the struggles that agents don't like 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 to think about when you know they're putting this together. So there's the sphere of influence. You know, what are the pillars of business? I mean. Like, 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 David, you, you specialize in working, working in scripts and dialogues with FISBOs and expires, et cetera, right? right? But there's also manners. Once you get, talk, talk to me about once you get to that point, how easy all other scripts are. Talk to me about that. So, so here's the thing. Like, once you get to a point where you're, when you're mastering the scripts and you get to a point, for me, I'm, I'm speaking on my expertise with, for sell by owners and expires it's very easy to master the scripts where you are calling your database. It's very easy to master the script where you're going on the listing presentation. All of that is scripting, right? The biggest part of learning a script though, and this is what I think people miss, it's asking the questions. The scripts are designed in a certain way where you're pulling information out and you're asking questions and getting a lot of detailed information from a seller. And some of those questions that we ask and some of the scriptings that we cover can be very uncomfortable questions. However, I believe our income is in direct proportion with our ability to have difficult conversations. So when you have the scripts mastered, it's a lot easier for you to have these conversations with people to pull out the information you need to secure the business. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, look, it's it's. It's the person that asks the most questions is the one that's going to get that listing, the one that's going to get that that buyer to do what they need to do. Absolutely. And I believe, do you feel that when, and if you can expand on this, do you feel yeah. that 
control of the transaction has a lot to do with the rapport you build through those questions? I absolutely it does. And here, here's the biggest part on that. And I'm glad you brought this up. A lot of times if you're scripting and you're talking to, let's just use a seller for an example. Most agents will say, well, why are you selling the house? And the seller will say, well, we need to move and we need to move by July. And they just think they have enough information by asking those questions. And that's not true. I believe you need to go three or four layers deep. Why are you selling the house? Why is that important to you? What's that move going to do for you? And more importantly, once you're there, how do, how do you feel? Because when you get that information, you're getting the emotional response for the move. And we all know logic makes people think. Emotion makes people act. And so That's when we know the emotional reason for the sale, we can actually get them to list with us. We can get them to price the property correctly. When we have offers coming in that may not be what they want, we can get them to accept the offer because we know the reason for the move. And so we really need to get good at really digging deep. And, and truly understanding the motivation. Yeah, I want everybody to write this one down. Logic makes people think, emotion makes people act. You've got to understand that. And it's it's how deep you go into questions. There's a book, I, I forget the name of it. It's, um, um, it has, it's a book by Dean Graziosi called The Millionaire Something. And he talks mm. about going seven levels deep right? About figuring out what you want to do, what your why is. And the reason I bring this up is you talked about going deep. I mean, why are they moving? What's down there? What's important to them with that? And one of the things that that I I have grown into and understood better than uh, I ever did was the more you know about that person, the better rapport you've built and the better way you're going to be able to control the transaction. Not that you're the boss, but the better better you're able to inject... um, to inject that logic, to inject that motion when you need to. Yes. Right? So, and, and that's the important part. So understand everybody, write this down again. Logic makes people think, emotion makes people act. That's, that's absolutely true. amazing. So, okay. So you you hit one of the things that we both hear all the time. I yes. don't like scripts. I, I don't like to practice them. Um, and is that related? Could the practice of scripts relate to um, the reason that people are in this business? Could the practice of anything be related to that? I mean, you know, you look at look at these great these great athletes. Yes. Right. And, I, I, you know, I'll use two of my favorite athletes. Well, I take that back. One of my favorite athletes, Derek Jeter, who, mm-hmm. you know, who made 56 errors his first year in professional ball. Right. What happened? Let's see. He became a Hall of Famer. Um, Tom Brady. Respect him, but he's been a he was a patriot, so I I can't love him, right? So sure. greatest of all time, no question. What does right. he do the day before day before training camp starts? Practice. What does right. he do the day of the Super Bowl? Practice. They don't right. stop. That's right. And a lot of people say, well, you know, I'll just go to the appointment. Really? Big mistake. So so here's the thing: you can practice with another agent and build your skill set. Or you can go meet with the seller and practice on your paycheck. It's a mistake to do that because if you're getting in front of a seller and making mistakes, you're losing opportunities. You need to do what I call sweat and practice so you don't bleed in war. And what that means to me is the role play partners should be the toughest role play you have. They should give you every objection, every pushback that you need to overcome so that when you get in front of that seller and they give you pushback, you're not like a deer and caught in the headlights. You're like, I've heard that before. I've practiced that before. And it's easy. I know what to say. And I, I remember watching, I think it was the last dance with Michael Jordan. And they were talking about how much he practices. And the practice with him was like playing in the NBA finals. So that when he got in the situation, it was like, I've already practiced this. Here's the shot. I can make the shot because I put the work in before the actual game. That's what we need. <laughs> You know, and, I, and, and I'm glad you brought that up with Michael Jordan and practice stuff. And, and, and it's also about showing up. OK, yes. you cannot go through the motions. You cannot go through the motions of anything. I mean, you know, just to equate, you know, the 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 NBA and stuff about, you know, they have all these times when the stars aren't going to play, which is amazing. And you think about Michael Jordan. And this is the way I think about this. There was a book by um, there's a there's I forget the name of the book. It was a guy who ran the, uh, the Philadelphia 76ers about 20, 25 years ago. And he said, talk to Michael Jordan. And the reason Michael Jordan played every game, because he knew that there was at least one person in the stands that came to see him play 
And he had to play at his best no matter what. And that's what we strive in practice to be at our best no matter what, right? Yes. So, so, so what is, aside from being the best, which is, right. I, I guess, one of the most important things, talk to me about, you know, what an agent needs to do to, to schedule themselves, to set themselves up for success and, and looking at what they're doing. You talked about objections, knowing what the objections are, right? I suggest all agents keep a spreadsheet of how many calls they made, how many times they talked to somebody, what objections right. did they hear, what objection got them off the phone, et cetera, et cetera. Talk to me about how you build upon something like that. So first and foremost, let me just take you back to when I started calling for sell by owners. I didn't know how to overcome objections. So what I did, once I got past the fear of picking up the 800 pound phone, I started making phone calls, right? And I would get to a point where I was so bad, my, my hands were shaking, I was nervous, and I was making mistakes and people were hanging up on me. Or I was making so many mistakes, I was hanging up on people. However, I realized pretty quickly that I kept getting the same four or five objections, the same ones. And so then it became, well, what's the answer? How do I overcome that objection? And what I learned is that the answers were out there. I had to go seek the answers. And so I believe that we should have a spiral bound, binder, with, binder with all of our scripts and all of our objection handlers. And for every objection, we should have three different ways to overcome it. So that's why it's really important that you role play with different people because they all have different experiences and you're going to learn different objection handlers from all the objections you're getting from sellers. And so if you start keeping track of that and making notes of those different objection handlers, you just keep those with you. If you talk to someone on the phone and they say, I don't want to pay your commission, will you lower it to five? If you don't remember how to respond, you turn to that page in your booklet and you have three different ways you can handle that particular objection. So I think that's one thing that we need to do a better job at is, is just really learning the scripts, the objection handlers and having two or three different ways to overcome each one. Okay, so so I want to give you a little push back. Get it? Yeah, you yes. push, push back. I, I, love, I love it. <laughs> I'll give you a little push back on, yes. on the phrase objection handlers. Okay. okay. So I believe that we shouldn't handle objections. I believe that we should we should we should pivot and turn objections or walk over them or jump over them or push through them. What do I mean by that? So, so, um, and, and I, I, I've known this forever and I've, I've, it's been enhanced by someone that's going to join us in a few minutes okay. um, by saying like, if someone says, I don't want to pay a commission and that jump over is, all right, I understand that you don't want to pay a commission. I get that hundred percent. But my question to you really is, do you, is, it, is it that you don't want to pay a commission? Are you more interested in paying a, not paying a commission? Or is it more important for you to make more money on your home? Love it. Right? So, 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 so those, are, those are, to me, those as an objection handler. I, it, it's always like, I've always looked at it this way. We tend to pe tell people what not to do rather than what to do. That's right. right. Um, you know, like, I'm going to go back to the 70s. You know, with the war with the war on drugs, right? How'd that work out for us? Not well. <laughs> not well, right? So we had to fight it, right? Instead of yep. telling people what to do, we're telling them what not to do. It's just like right. wet paint, hot stove, right? Yep. Yes. So, so, so when I look at that, and one of the things you said to me the other day when we talk about all of these things, the book that is a fantastic idea, because when I'm on the phone, no matter who I'm talking to, if it's if it's if I'm calling for sale by owners or expires myself, or I'm working with you know a prospect that talk to them about coaching in a strategy call, I'm going to have objections in front of me. I'm going to have some script dialogues for me, just as a reminder. Even though I practice them and I'm, I'm scripted, etc., but I'm also going to know what I did, how I did it, and write it down, just as you said, right? Right. And the important part, I think, with that is to know how serious you are by actually setting up time frames to, to watch what you're doing. I also ask them to videotape what they're doing as well. I, I have to applaud you for saying that. One of the big parts of my training program is that we record everything. You wrote, re, you record your role play sessions. If I go on the for sale by owner preview, I'm recording that interaction with the seller. If I go on the listing presentation, I'm reviewing, I'm actually recording that as well. And then I review the tape later on to figure out what I did well and what I can work on. And what I found in the beginning when I was not getting the listing and I reviewed that tape, 
I, I got off script. I was talking too much. I wasn't asking enough questions. And so it just gave me clarity on what I needed to improve on. And there's mm -hmm. accountability when you have someone reviewing those recordings for you, it forces you to stay on script because you know someone's going to listen to what you, you're saying. And so I think we should record every interaction we have when it's about scripts. And, and again, I'm going to bring this over to athletics. Let's talk yeah. about football. Let's talk about yeah. baseball. Let's talk about everything. They're watching film. Yes. It's the same thing. They're in a profession. They're watching film. How did I swing? Or, or honestly, I'll take it back to me. Even years ago when I was in, in college and fencing, mm -hmm. right? I, if I, there was an opportunity for me to watch what I did in a certain bout, I would yeah. definitely watch that to see what I did. Because my coach would say, you did this, this, and this wrong. I said, no, I didn't. He goes, watch the video. That's right. That's and right. And it worked every time. We're professionals. At least we think we are, or we should we, be. We, we think we are. We definitely need to watch. I would say a video over an audio. If you're watching a video recording of yourself, you'd be surprised when someone gives you an objection how most people look caught off guard versus smiling you know, acknowledging the, the objection, isolating it and overcoming it and your body language as well. Mirror and matching who you're talking to. A lot of times people are sitting back like this. However, you're speaking to them and you're pointing and you're leaning forward. You're not in rapport with that person. And it takes sometimes watching the recording to see if you're in rapport, if you are mirror and matching how they're standing, how they're talking, their cadence. It's really important that we record all that. David, please expand on what you just said. Mirror matching, cadence, pace, tone. Expand on all of that, please. So here's what I'll tell you. and Here's what I learned years ago. You can be on a listing appointment with the seller. You can be saying all the right things. However, they just don't feel good about you. They don't feel like they're in rapport with you. And so what I learned, and, and you, you, you have to be subtle about these things. If you're talking to someone and they're leaning forward and they have their arms crossed, slowly you need to get into that position. If you are talking to someone who talks really fast and you talk really slow, you need to speed things up so that you stay in rapport with that person. And it, it takes you to be very purposeful about those cues. So it's how you practice in role play is how you practice when you're in front of a, a seller. And so it's really important that part of your role play is the mirror matching, making sure that your role play partners, making sure you have eye contact, you're, you're matching their rate of speed, you're matching their body position so that you can stay in rapport and that seller feels really good about you and they want to work with you because you guys seem very similar. 100%. I, I, I love it. I mean, and also, I mean, okay, so rapport. Yes. Um, um, rapport and relationships. And I believe you said it the other day, we use the phrase all the time, what's the difference between a contact and a contract? The R. The R effect. Yes. You, I mean, honestly, a lot of people, when you call a for sale by owner and their response is, geez, you're the 50th one to call me today, right? So yeah. how would you handle that? You're the 50th wow. one to call today. Wow, that really surprises me to hear that. In New Jersey, we have 55,000 agents, so there was only a few of us actually doing our job. I know that can be a little frustrating getting a lot of phone calls. Let me ask you, when you sell this house, where are you moving to? Exactly. See, you, you took the objection, you rolled with it, you responded to it, yep. and you went forward. And that is a start of building rapport. Right. And there's so many different things you can do. And I and I would say to I would say to agents, don't just listen to me. Don't just listen to you. Yes. Go out there and listen to what people are saying. You know, I've had I've had a couple of other um, really great um, dialogue people on here, like a guy by the name of uh, you might even know him, Derek Lipsky from Boston area. Absolutely, I love Derek. Derek's, Derek's a good guy, and, and he he is on YouTube with everything, and, and I love the way he does it. And he's just, he's just, he has a lot of fun with it. Um, but you have to have fun. You have to have fun with it. Right. You have to have fun with it. You, and, and, and when you do have the fun, it takes the fear out of it. Right. And, and so, and, and, and so that's okay. So we talked about, we talked about the, um, um, the fear of it to a point. We talked about that 800 pound phone. Talk to me yeah. how you actually, how do you, how have you, when you started doing it, you said you didn't want to make the calls. How have you pushed through the fear or pushed through the doubt? So what I realized pretty quickly is that if you can get people talking about them, it takes a lot of pressure off of you. 
And so my whole affirmation was, I'm going to make this phone call and find out what's important to the seller. I'm not making it about me and how great I am and how great my company is and what I can do for them because people don't care what you know until they know you care about them. So that, that R factor building that relationship and being a resource, I made every single phone call to why are you selling? Why is this so important? Nothing about me. I made it all about them. And I can't tell you, I probably went on a hundred different appointments over the years and the husband or the wife would come in and they would say, I don't know what you said on the phone, but they haven't let anyone come in and they let you come in. So let's, let's talk. And the reason I got the appointment is because I made it about the person I was talking to on the phone and they felt that I actually cared about what they were looking to accomplish. I understood their motivation. I understood the emotions behind it. I understood their timeline. And so once I took the time to dig in, they were open and receptive to me coming in and seeing if I can help, you know, form a resolution to get their home sold. So, so, so two phrases, two sayings I want to bring up and repeat one you just said. First yes. of all, it's, it's important to understand before you can be understood. And second, what you just said, people don't care what you know until they know you care. Yeah. That's something that everybody should be writing down, right? Um, you know, there's, there's, there's so many other ways uh, that you've talked about motivating people. We talked the other day about it and, you know, getting serious clients and stuff. And um, one of the things I love that my friend who's about to join us, Sekou Pyle, has done with some agencies, had them write a check. Talk to me about that theory of writing the check. So listen, the power of writing a check is very powerful. It, can I give you my backstory? I, I won't take a lot of time with it. Yeah, no, go ahead. So I got into real estate by going to a seminar at my church. And the, the speaker there was a, a, it was a mastermind. He was a motivational speaker. And he said, raise your hand if there's something that you want to do that you've never done. I raised my hand. He actually chose me out of hundreds of people. What do you want to do, sir? Well, I, I like to buy an investment property. Why haven't you done it? Not sure. Okay. Are you committed to doing it? Yes, I am. Okay. Take out your checkbook. I want you to write a check for a thousand dollars and I want you to give it to the guy sitting next to you. And if you don't have a, a house, how long will it take you to get a house? I said, I can do it in two months. If you don't have a house in two months, he gets to cash that check. And I did not want to write that check out, but I had everyone in my church cheering me on and clapping. Oh, that's so awesome. Yes. So I wrote the check out and guess what? In two weeks, I was under contract on the duplex that I still own to this day. So when I have a coaching client and they are talking about what they want to accomplish, I get them to write a check. Okay, so you want to do this. You want to be dedicated to lead gen every day. You want to make 20 contacts a day and book five listing appointments a week and you're committed to doing the activities. All right, what's the consequence if you don't do that? Let's put, your, let's put the money where, where your mouth is. Well, I guess it would hurt if I, if I wrote a check for 500. I'm like, 500 is not enough. What if we double it to 1,000? Well, that, that's, that's pretty expensive. I don't, I don't know if I can do that. Well, then I think we should double it to 2,000 then. And we have this conversation where the, the number gets larger and they get very uncomfortable. And yet what I get them to understand is if they're not willing to write that check, then they're not really committed to the goal. And once they are committed to it and they write that check, guess what? They show up every day and they do yep. the work. They, they get the results. I just need to get them to buy into making the doing the job and making the activities every day. So I love writing those checks. I love that. I love that. You know, and and uh, I, I I I've heard of that before. It's it, it's it, it's a uh, um, it's something that you, that really gets people motivated. And and I believe that you know motivation is really really important. I believe it's hundred percent important. But I also believe that if, you, if you're not motivated, the only way you're going to be able to get there is to be disciplined in what you're doing. And the only way to do that is to start somewhere. Um, you know, I, I am, David, I am I am so lucky every day I get to work next to somebody uh, who I completely and totally respect. Uh, he's he's one of my coaches um, and, and I am honored to be one of his coaches. And we awesome. work together side by side like crazy. And it's someone that you know. And I like to bring him on, on my broadcast. And I'm right now like to introduce Amen. my friend, my coach, um, my friend. Yeah, just, <laughs> Take who pile. Right? There he is. I'm there. The I'm there singing and laughing, talking about write that check, baby. Write that check. <laughs> What's going on, sir? Good to see you. Rocking and rolling, Mr. David Rodney. I am not worthy. I'm not worthy. 
I got a quick story for y'all. I got a quick story for y'all. It is completely about Dave Radney. So we went and uh, I was like, Dave, man, let's sit down and talk. And this, this and that. He was like, bet, meet me at this brewery. I think it was like a brewery. It was like a diner or something like that. Cafe um, and Yeah, right? And so we go up there and we walk in the spot. Now, if you don't know Dave, Dave is like 100 feet tall. Like he's he's both in personality and in, in, in position and and in actual stature. He's a really, really tall guy. He's a big guy, right? And so naturally, when you got a really big guy, people turn around and look. Everybody in the plot was, hey, Dave, what's up, David? What's going on, David? <laughs> Everybody knew the guy. And it's something that you said to me when you, we, were, we were talking behind the scenes finale. He's just what he says he is. He is exactly as he shows up, man. He's a great dude. And it is an honor and pleasure to be associated with you, David. Uh, uh, David and David and David and David and David and David and Mr. Radney and however we're going to do it, man. What is up? What's up? Can I just share something with you right now? Which yes, is really sir, This popped up on my Facebook memory this morning. That was exactly <laughs> two years ago. Today, we were there together. How about that? That's it. That's oh, it. Shit. That's the day. Listen, that was today, two years ago. That was awesome. Listen, I um, I often talk about you, um, David. I, I, I speak about, I hope you don't mind, man. I, I speak about you from a reverence perspective. Um, when, when I speak about uh, scripting, script practice, the mindset of a scripted agent, the mindset of an agent that has a process and a system behind what they say to their clients, their customers and prospects. I speak about the push program, right? And I speak about it just like that. I'm like, well, if you really want to get serious about, about your system and your scripts, you really need to see the push program. You need to see David Radney. And, and, and I hope, hope to goodness I give you too many people to work with. Uh, on a regular basis, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's, it's been going extremely well, and I appreciate that endorsement coming from you. And, yeah. you know, I, I think what you recognize about me is something you said earlier. For me, it's it's not just about the money. It's about impacting people's lives. And I've always believed you help enough people get what they want, you'll get what you want. And I know a lot of agents get into real estate thinking, that their job is to sell houses and they don't really understand their job is really to lead generate and create opportunities and we need to be on that phone or door knocking or talking to people every single day and it's it's really a matter of what we say you know yeah. somebody invites you to their house for a listing appointment it's because they believe that you can help them you win or you lose that opportunity the minute you open your mouth so you <laughs> need to know what to say. and so that's that's the importance of, of push is teaching you what to say how to manage the objections how to close yeah. a lot of people will go through a listing presentation to do a great job and leave the house without the paperwork being signed never and even so, asked for it never, never asked for it it's never even asked. asked you know you can only get something if you ask for it Amen. So, so listen, um, I'm 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 here. I'm watching you guys. I'm I'm chomping on the bit to, to come and play with you guys and and talk. And uh, so so write the check, write the check, write the check, right? So 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 I I I get the great pleasure of working with these powerhouse agents from all over the country, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it's humbling in 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 their sort of agreement to be held accountable by this unreasonable coach, right? Uh, the one thing I know about you for sure that can be said 100% with certainty is that you are consistent, David Radley. That if you say we're gonna do this at this time, then damn it, you're gonna do this in this time. And you also hold people to that type of consistency. And that is invaluable as a coach. So I wanna share with you something that just happened yesterday. We were on our, I think we were on our evening call. Now you have a, a 5 p.m. call Wednesdays, right? Or is it 6 p.m.? It's five o'clock, Scotch and Scripts at five. On Scotch and Scripts at five. First of all, dig the name finale, Scotch and Scripts. Like we already talked about it. Right, right, right. I'm gonna be on it next week, that's for sure. <laughs> there we go. But you, but you I, I, I think in Two years you've been doing Scotch and Scripts for like yeah, the last like 24 years, mm -hmm. right? I think I've seen you have to change the date once. 
Right. I don't think you've ever had to change it like you've been consistent. And Finale has been on every day, every Friday, consistently. 255. How many we got so far? 164. <laughs> 688. <laughs> right. I mean, that one time was my, my anniversary. So it's, yeah, man. You know, you, it's, it's, you try it's, to stay you're married. Right. You try not to get hit. Of course. <laughs> so this agent yesterday was talking to me, right? So, so in our model, like your model, we have a capping structure, mm -hmm. right? So the capping structure, you hit a certain amount, you cap. And then in our model, so so in your model, you have like the mega agent status, you go to ALC and things like that. In our model, it's the icon system, yep. right? So if you cap and then you do 20 more deals, you get your cap back and blah, 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 blah. So a lot of the cappers, their focus is not capping. Their focus is the icon status. It's the 20 deals beyond capping. Got so it. I'm on with this agent. We were on last night on our group yep. call. And this agent is like, I'm nine deals away from capping and my, my cap resets in October. So I've got nine deals to do before October. And so in talking to her, I said, well, what did you do yesterday? And she says, well, I put together my KV core and I put together this and I put my, my database together and this and that and I, and blah, 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 blah. I said, well, it looks to me like you were doing admin work yesterday and not icon work yesterday. And she goes, what? And I'm like, yeah, it looks like you're looking to be one of the best admins in the world and not an icon agent. In order to be an icon agent, you got to be doing icon work. You got to write that check. And so at a certain level, right? So, so David, you were challenged by your church, by the, by the minister at the front, right? You were challenged by the minister or the, the, the motivational speaker to write the check to create action, Correct. right? Right. I, I think that your push program, I think that your consistency has proven that once your action is in motion, once your momentum is created, man, there's nothing that can stop you, brother. That's right. I, I, I love I'm it. looking at your push program. I'm looking at it as all of the actions and activities of one of the greatest coaches in the world uh, definitely belong in the pantheon. The, 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 the information is top notch. The relationships, those R's that you're talking about, the relationships and the resources are top notch. And right. uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm looking at the agents that are going through your program, having known them before your program and seeing them afterwards. Yeah, man, I can hear you in their language. I can hear you in their conversation, and it's 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 a great pleasure to see all of the stuff that came out of it, man. What do you say love, about your consistency, bro? <laughs> I, I love that you said that, especially, you know, you hearing my voice in them. They tell me that they hear me in their ear, right? When someone says, will you lower your commission? Their first response is, nope. The other <laughs> no. person, right? Because they hear me <laughs> saying, you better not lower your commission, right? So I, I, I love that. And, and the consistency is extremely important to me is integrity. I, yeah. I was raised by my grandfather. Right. He always said, all you have is your word. You tell someone you're going to be there at 11, be there at 11. Right. And I'm, I'm early. And so my my class, I tell people it starts at 11. You need to be here and logged on before 11. You treat this class like it's a million dollar listing appointment. Would you show up late to that? No, don't show up late to class. And so it's it's the integrity piece is huge for me. Dude. And it's it's clear. It's evident. It's it has the show me effect to it, mm -hmm. yes, right? Yes. Um, it, it lends itself to the 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 quality of the information that you're passing on. Um, I, I'll say this: there's nothing that I've ever heard David Radney say that he hasn't done himself. You understand what I mean? So, like, if he's yeah. telling you to communicate with Fizbo's, he's telling you to not lower your commission and to just just respond this way. It's because he's put it on the line and risked it. And he's telling you what the response has been in the past, right? And yeah. so uh, uh, I, I remember as as we were growing in, in this business and we were growing together in this business, and I've had the great pleasure of being able to answer a question or two that you've asked, and you've definitely answered a question or two that I've asked. I remember uh, 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 the beginnings of PUSH. Now, I don't know if you did this already, but can you break down what P-U-S-H stands for? Sure can. Prospect until success happens. Damn. We're just staying on the grind. Too many times we, we give up too quickly. You Have you seen the image where there's the miner breaking through the wall 
and he just gets mm-hmm. tired and walks away, and the next person comes and hits the wall one time, one and there's time. all the reward. <laughs> That, that's us as real estate agents. We we are committed to the process. And for me, my whole mindset is if I know you're motivated as a seller, mm-hmm. you're going to hear from me until you list with me or you list with someone else. I am not going to stop. And so that's what I teach and push. You prospect until success, success happens. And part of that is the whole relationship, building the relationship, being a resource and staying in touch consistently until they say, you know what, Dave, we're ready. Damn right. Come that's that it. that's that grit that I got above my head, man. You prospect until success happens. I love, man. I love the grit. I love the grit. <laughs> I'm hungry and I, I want I want to work with people that are hungry. I don't want the people who are like, I could eat. I want someone who's hungry who will go after it. Damn and right. So that's why it's important to plug in and understand their big why, their vision for their life. Because once you know what's important to them, when they don't show up, mm. Say, well, you told me that you wanted to do X, Y, and Z. Why are you choosing not to do that? And we have these tough discussions and they know I care because when they tell me what's important, I'm writing it down. Just like with a seller, when you tell me what's important, I'm writing it down and I'm coming back at you saying, you didn't show up today. You didn't do one activity that was income producing today. You're doing that admin work, this $10 an hour work where you should be on the phone doing the three, four, five, six hundred dollar an hour work. So <laughs> having those that's, conversations. That's a life of avoidance. You know, they're just they're yeah. not working doing the work because they have this fear, this 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 false anxiety that's that's going on in their head of doubt and everything else. There's only one way to get through that, David, and, and say, well, you know what? It's called action. It's called action. It's called, it's called action. Do, do the work, right? And and as you move forward with building the scripts and understanding the scripts and practice them. They say, well, you know, this is boring. I've been doing this for a long time. Why do I have to keep practicing? Because it's not only that we need to know what they are, but we need to master what they are. You said yeah. this word before, David. You said mastery, right? Yes. And in all the I, 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 I in a coaching program now myself, and what we're working on is mastery. It's not learning. It's mastery. It's, it's mastery. Um, if I could share something that happened yesterday, I had a conversation Please. with an agent. And they have gone through my push 2.0 program, which is learning how to pre-qualify a seller, putting together a pre-listing packet and learning the listing presentation. And they said, well, I I don't think I'm going to sign up for your August class. I've already taken it. So I don't think I need it. (laughs) I said, listen, that's fair. Like if you don't need it, you, you shouldn't take it. Here's my question for you. If a seller called you right now and said, I want you to list my property. I need you to come over in an hour. Are you ready to go? And they said, no. And I said, well, then you need to be in the program. You need to master that presentation and that process. And until you've mastered it, you still need to be plugged in. Right? Exactly. So, and, even, and even after you master it. Okay. So right. I, I'll use two examples. One is the movie Star Wars. I'm a Star Wars fan. I've seen it hundreds of times. And every time I see it, I still see something I didn't see the previous time. Right? I'm going to go to a coach now. I've coached with John Sheplak for about 10 years. I was on a call. He was he did a call every Monday, and it was at noon every Monday. I was on that call, I'm going to say 45 out of 52 weeks mm-hmm. every year. And wow. people say, well, I've already heard it. I've already heard it. Let's go to a seminar. Let's, I've, already, I've already heard him. I don't need to hear him again. Yes, you do. Because you hear something you haven't heard. You hear it a different way that triggers something else in you. That's what mastery is all about. And that's why you need to keep doing things over and over and over again. That's why Tom Brady practices even now and Derek Jeter practices until his last day. Well, I'll be, I'll be honest with you, watching David Radney, right, watching this guy, I've also watched him evolve. So the, the information that he's delivering may be similar or the same as the information that the foundation, but the person delivering the information has evolved to the point where there's even greater understanding of the why. There's even greater understanding of the how. There's even greater understanding of the who. And so now the information you, at, at coming to push 2.0 in August gives you the benefit of push 2.0 from June and July. Yep. And that right there has been uh, in, in my in my humble opinion, has been the most pleasure watching you work, bro. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, it's just I'm watching you off. Yeah. I'm going too. No man walks through the same river twice because he is no longer the same man. It is no longer the same river. So 
my students are changing, I'm changing. My, my, my um, journey started with me being afraid to do public speaking. 12 years ago, I would never even do this podcast with you. 12 years ago, I wouldn't stand up in front of two people. And yet I had and to- And now look at this. Ooh. And now look at me now. Look at the gift. Doing work and being consistent and growing, right? Helping yeah. other people get what they want, it helped me get better. <laughs> and I'm improving every time I teach push, I get stronger. So it's not just about them, it's about my growth as well as, as a coach. Dude, it, it, is, it is a pleasure to watch you work. It's a pleasure even more to hear you work, right? Yeah. And then, uh, uh, so then to see the results of your work, right? I mean, I, I could name names, but I won't for right now, right? I can name names of people that I know have gone through your push and push 2.0 that sound incredibly like you. And, and so listen, if I, if I, if I'm going to say anything, one of the greatest things I'm speaking now to the people out there in the world and not necessarily to these two gentlemen that I'm talking with, one of the greatest things that you could hear or see as a coach is your work in action in someone else. It's the opportunity to replicate. It's the opportunity to duplicate. It's the opportunity to see you evolve in someone else. That is really a motivating factor for these personality types right here. These folks that, that are laid on the line and risk yeah. development. I know that David, you could do probably a hundred transactions a year. I don't know what your numbers are right now. People often ask me, well, say, cool, if you could do so many transactions, why don't you just do that instead of doing this? And I'd be like, well, where would the reward be if I get rewarded from watching you grow? That's it. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's where I get my reward from helping other people. And like you just said, I have to tell you, a lot of what you see in me, I get from watching you and having conversations with you and watching your videos. It motivates me as well. And to your point, I can go get a listing today. I know I can do it and they would pay me 6% commission. I get more pleasure helping the agents go out and get their 6% commission. I yes. am living what I call my life by design. Yes. My life by design is helping other people. And yes. by, you know, I, I get what I want and what I need out of life. That's, that's, I'm happy. That's, that's the biggest thing, being happy in the life that you're living. Damn right. Yeah. Right. And that, I think that's the goal that, that Sekou and I have and, and uh, it, it makes it easier to be happy. It makes it easier to achieve it. Would you agree with that, guys? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I tell people all the time, my brand is happiness, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and so, uh, David, I'm going to share with you something that I shared with Finale. A okay. few weeks ago, I was in, a um, uh, uh, couple of months ago, I was in Milwaukee. Game six of the playoffs, not mm -hmm. the finals. Mm -hmm. Game six of the playoffs, Milwaukee Bucks versus the, 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 the Brooklyn Nets. Right. And it was all on the line for the for the Bucks. Right. It was all on the line for the Bucks. And uh, I was there with some really powerhouse power playing coaches and agents. And uh, maybe about three hours before game time, they say, hey, man, you guys want to go to the game? And I let my 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 doubt, I let my inner demons talk to me. And I was like, ah, that's going to be too expensive. There's no way we can get tickets. Like, I, I let the negativity speak. The scripts are still going in my head. The gremlins are still going in my head, no matter what we do and how much we motivate other folks. Right. And then I walked through, as I was walking away, I realized I was playing small. Right? I realized I was playing small. And I say this all the time. I'm black, I'm rich, and I'm spoiled. I can do whatever I want with my money. You know what I mean? It's that, uh, you know, the money is just a, a vehicle to get to, to and fro. Well, this particular powerhouse agent, uh, Veronica Figueroa, fake team. She's down in Florida. She, she's a badass. She already she got she sponsors a, a professional soccer team, right? So she know how to get tickets, right? And so not only did she get us tickets, but she got thirteen in a row. We had excellent seats, and we went to the game, right? And so yes, we got to enjoy the game. The next day, I was in this space where I was in such deep thought because I realized that. One of my dreams were accomplished last night and I didn't do it myself, right? I, I, have, I have been putting on the line, I wanna bet money at a casino and not worry about the loss. I wanna do this, I wanna bet big money at a casino and not worry about the loss. And what I didn't realize over and over again as I made those statements, I never once realized what would happen, never once thought about what would happen if I won. Hmm. Hmm. 
you had to turn it around. Yeah, man. Like, I like that. I've been talking about loss all this time. I was talking about right. how expensive these yep. tickets are and, and what this, 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 and that. What if I invested in my joy? What if I just invested in what made me happy? And what if, what if the best part of it came out of it and everybody got to, so, so, so I decided that day, day, that I was going to work for my joy. I was going to work for my happiness and my brand would be joy and happiness. And, and damn it, man, if you didn't say that same thing this morning, if you didn't show that same thing this morning, I don't know what you did, man. And I, and I, mm, I, I connect with it. Thanks coach. I, I love what you said. And you know what, what you focus on expands and yep. you me a little bit outside of real estate, Dave, you may not know this about me. I don't know if you can see up right above me. These are all, this is what I do. This is my, yes. my is here, my nature and my landscape photography. Yes. And I, I take these pictures and I share it is my way to share gratitude, right? It's hard to be down and depressed when you're focused on what you're grateful for. And so I'm constantly sharing gratitude with people and letting them know I love life. I love being outdoors, sharing those images. And during COVID, when people were stuck in the house, I can't tell you how many people sent me messages. We look forward to your pictures every day. It brightens our soul, right? I get those messages constantly. And again, you help enough people get what they want. You get what you want. Yeah. And so it's been a blessing. I want to, I want to add to that from one of my great coaches, great friends and say, could you know, Grant, Grant yes, always sir. told me what you appreciate appreciates mm. plain and simple, plain and simple. It really does. And, 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 you know, we go through periods in our time, in our lives where we get, Hey, we get pissed off at something or we get to, we get down on something or someone, but we forget that we really need to appreciate that. Even if it's not the greatest thing since sliced bread right away, right. or it is there, we forget to appreciate it. And I've learned that. I mean, I learned that, all the time now. I mean, because I think about it all the time. I talk about appreciation. I think about appreciation all of the time because right. it's so very important. And it's allowed me to build more confidence in myself. And mm. it really works. It really is great. Mm. Um, I, we need to introduce him to Grant, by the way. That would be an excellent. I, I keep trying to say to all of you guys, we need to have the coaches roundtable meeting. You know, you know, I think, that, <laughs> yes. I think that's yes. something I think that's something we can start and and. You know, Grant will definitely come on. You've never, oh, never, yeah, Grant is a great guy, uh, great friend. Um, and you know, we're 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 up against time, guys. I, I yeah. wanna I wanna thank you, David, for coming on. I wanna thank Sekou so much. Thank you um, for having me. Sekou, I'm gonna let you ask the last question. Um, because because you're the one who turned me on to it. So David, we got a last question we ask on this broadcast all the time, and I'm gonna okay. let my man Sekou ask you that question. This is gonna be difficult. I'm gonna need you to dig deep for this, Dave. Because you are not the kind of person that can answer this question easily. Right. All right, you ready for uh, this? You've for helped it. hundreds of people, maybe thousands of people already in the in the in the few years that I've known you. What can we do to help you? How can we help Dave Radney? That is a great question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I think that by you continuing to do what you do, it helps me. I may not comment and post on the videos and everything you're doing, but you better believe that I'm watching you and I'm able to grow into the man and the coach that I want to be based on the examples I'm seeing. So continue to stay consistent, continue to be you as you motivate me to continue to get better every single day. So please just continue to do your thing is what I would say. Yes, sir. Yes. So yeah. that's easy, man. I, I, I absolutely love you. Um, I you. We got to have push. We got to have push. As part of the appointment academy, bro, we do, we do, we do. Is, 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 I'm pushing you to get the push on the appointment academy, bro. I am doing some things behind the scenes that I haven't talked about with push that are going to be fantastic, and I look Can't forward wait. to talking to you about Can't it. Wait. I want to sure. end with one thing. I mean, say, you know why people come on this broadcast? Really, it's not for me. It's not for you. You know what it is, right? I know what it is, baby. Whoop, whoop. That's the sound I, of the I need, I need my, I need my hat. That's the sound of the so the, the, hat, the hat's coming your way, David. You know, uh, we got a yes. couple different styles. We got to see what we got in stock, but it looks like this one will be coming out your way. Thank, Thank you, you so much, David. It has been a pleasure yeah. to get Thank to know you again. I can't wait to collaborate with you on things. Say cool as always. You know what? Right here, man. Right here. Later, you know what that later, is, right? later. Yes, yes, y'all. Let's go. Guys, Thank you for the thanks. introduction. I appreciate it so much. Thank you, guys. Guys, I'm gonna leave. I'll see okay. y'all. You guys hang out. All right, man. See you. All right. All right. See We're gonna.
David, we're going to go out. We're going to we're going to come back back. So just stay for a minute. Everybody, I want to thank you so much for coming on today and watching our broadcast. If you're watching as as as, as a um, as a as a recording, fantastic. Check out the YouTube channel. Make sure Real Estate Talk TGIF. Make sure you hit the bell, which is when you subscribe, so you get notice of when we're doing these every Friday. We do them every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern. Rarely do we change, but we can as well. We got great guests coming up next week and following weeks, uh, and look forward to seeing everybody. Can't wait to talk, Dave. Just stay one second. We're going to go out, come right back in. Thank you so much, everybody. Mm -hmm.